Hello and good time of day to you. Inside this box there should be a spectrum sent to me by one of the members of the World of Spectrum forums. It uh, has a fault. Uh, the fault is reported as there being no video signal from the spectrum. Right, so here it is, an issue for a Spectrum. I can see that it has no ULA in it. Um, the owner tells me that the ULA from it has been tested in another Spectrum, so I'm not going to expect that to be the problem. But of course, I will have to find one to plug in there to test it. It looks as if the video output has been bypassed, so, well, the modulator has been bypassed so that the video output goes directly to the rear connector. The owner also tells, tells me that transistors TR2 and 3 have been replaced and TR4 and TR5 have been replaced and that uh, capacitors C45 and C44 have been replaced because they showed signs of leaking. I'm not sure whether the owner meant TR1 and TR2 rather than TR2 and TR3 as at 1 and 2, these two down here would be the obvious ones to try replacing if there's a fault with the video output. So I'm going to begin by having a general look at the board. In particular I will look at the devices that have been replaced, check they that appears to be done correctly, and then I will do the, the standard set of tests that I do to any Spectrum before I turn it on, and that I demonstrated in another video, so that should at least tell us that there are no major faults with the power supply circuitry. And at that point, once I found a ULA, I'll try turning it on and we'll have a look to see whether we can find a video signal from it. I have had a close look at the circuit board and uh, I can see that, uh, as noted, uh, this capacitor down here, C44, has been replaced, but I think it's fairly clear the other one that's been replaced is C. 34 instead of C45. I would suspect that probably the other capacitors, electrolytic capacitors at least, should be replaced as if these two had problems I'm sure others must be nearing the end of their lives. It looks as if TR4 and TR5 have been replaced with appropriate replacements and they look to be the correct way around. Uh, TR1 and TR2 as I initially suspected have been replaced, not TR3, which I think is this one here. Um, I can't see the marking on TR2, the way it's installed, but TR1 is a BC549, which should be an appropriate replacement, but my notes say their pinout is not the same as the original ZTX313. The emitter and collector leads are reversed, so I think that probably both of these transistors are installed the wrong way around, and that certainly would cause a problem with the video output. I perform my usual basic set of tests where I take some resistance measurements at various points on the board and uh, use the diode test mode of a multimeter to check TR4 and TR5 in circuit and those tests all gave normal results so I don't think there are any problems with the power supply circuitry. I note that, uh, and this isn't a criticism of the owner, that the soldering around some of the replacements is rather messy so I'll tidy that up later but it doesn't look as if it should stop anything from functioning. So what I'll do next is I will install a ULA, connect it up to a display, power it on, check that the expected voltages are present in the right places and see whether we get a display from it. I've installed a 6C-7 ULA, which is the type necessary for an issue 4A spectrum, connected the video output up to the composite input of a television set and I'm just about to connect this spectrum up to a power supply. So I've got my voltmeter here ready, turn that on.
and I've plugged in the supply and the power supply is reporting that it's drawing 580 milliamps at 9 volts. Uh, there's a slight flickering on the television but uh, no display as I'd expect. Let's have a look at the lower RAM ICs and check we've got the correct power supply voltages. So there should be 5 volts on this one. That's fine. 12 volts over here. That's correct again. And minus 5 volts on this pin here. Yes, that's absolutely fine. So the power supply circuitry is working correctly. I note that uh, this connection down in here, this wire that carries the composite video to the output connector, isn't soldered on at all. It's just uh, loosely wrapped around the post of the output connector which is not very good but moving it about doesn't generate a correct display so I don't think that's the cause of the problem. I'll probably replace this wire with a capacitor. That's my preferred option as it removes the rather arbitrary DC offset that the output buffer circuit puts onto the video signal. Now of course very strictly uh, no offset like that is, is not correct for a video signal either but almost every display will be able to correctly restore the level and I've never known to, that to cause a problem. The spectrum's still turned on and I've set up this oscilloscope so I can have a look at the signals on some of the ULA's pins. First I'll connect the probe to pin 39 and all being well we should see a 14 MHz signal. This is generated by quartz crystal X1 and some circuitry inside the ULA. This signal is used to derive all of the clocks used in the spectrum. There's quite a lot of noise on the signal, but that's more or less how it normally looks. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see the oscilloscope's estimation of the frequency of this signal, derived from the trigger timing information, and it's very close to 14 MHz. So I don't think there's any problem with this part of the spectrum. Now I'll adjust the oscilloscope's time base, as I want to have a look at what should be a lower frequency signal. Now I'll connect the probe to pin 17 of the ULA. Here I should see the major contributor to the video signal. It should contain the synchronization information and is the dominant part of the luminance signal. That looks correct too. That's the type of signal I'd expect to see there. So I think this Spectrum must only have a fairly simple problem in its uh, video output circuitry and uh, as I saw earlier I suspect transistors TR1 and TR2 are the wrong way around. So next I'll do some general tidying up of some of the messy soldering on this board. I will replace the wire link that carries the video signal to the output connector with an electrolytic capacitor. I will remove transistors TR1 and TR2, check what type they are, check they're working, check their pinout, and if they're okay, install them the correct way around, and then we'll try again and see whether we can get the expected video output from this computer. I've cleaned up some of the messy solder joints on the underside of this circuit board, and uh, put this capacitor now to form the connection for the video signal to the output socket and, and soldered it onto the connector properly so there shouldn't be any problems there and I want to remove these two transistors here TR1 and TR2 as I suspect they're installed the wrong way around
Both of these are type BC549. I'm going to use the diode test feature of this multimeter to make a quick check that these transistors are probably still working correctly. Of course this is not a, a guarantee that all their parameters are within specification but it should be a good guide. These are both NPN transistors and I know their middle leg is the base terminal so if I connect the positive test probe to that one we should measure a forward biased diode voltage drop between there and each of the other two legs. And that appears correct, so let's just check. We should not measure any forward voltage with the connections reversed. And we don't. So I think that transistor is a good one. We'll check the other one in the same way. It appears that probably both of those are in good working order. Here is part of the Spectrum circuit diagram. It shows the video output circuitry and we're particularly interested in transistors TR1 and TR2 down here. They combine and buffer the chrominance and luminance portions of the composite video signal and feed them to the video modulator. I'm going to make a, a few continuity checks in this part of the circuit as a demonstration of how the circuit diagram matches up to the layout of the circuit board and to make sure that my understanding of the orientation of these two transistors is correct. In the diagram here we can see that the collector of transistor TR1 is connected directly to the base of transistor TR2 so let's confirm that's the case on the circuit board. Transistor TR1 is on the left here and its collector is its rightmost pin so this one here and it should be connected to the center pin of TR2 its base. I've got uh, the multimeter here set up in continuity test mode so you should hear it beep if there's a very low impedance between the probes. And that's correct, so the circuit is connected as expected there. I also want to check to demonstrate that uh, TR2's emitter here is connected directly to the input of the video modulator. Well, it was originally, but now of course we have uh, placed this capacitor between the output connector and this point here so bypassing the modulator altogether so if I place one probe on TR2's emitter which is its rightmost pad here and the other probe on one side of this capacitor the circuit board side of the capacitor and again as expected there's continuity there so it looks as if the connections around these transistors are in place if I was strictly worried I could go further and make some measurements and check that some of these resistances measure as shown here but I've not noticed any obvious signs of damage on the circuit board or to any of the components so I'm going to go ahead reinstall these two transistors the correct way around and then we'll test the computer again So this time I'm installing TR1 and TR2 the opposite way around from the indicated outline on the silk screen because I know these transistors have their emitter and collector reversed 
compared to the original transistors that were installed. If I use a short link of wire to briefly short the two connections of capacitor C27, the spectrum should reset. And from the time that took, it seems likely the spectrum is working as a 48K model. So far as I can tell, this spectrum now works perfectly. Here are a few notes for its owner. While working on it earlier, I remounted this keyboard connector here so that it's now flush to the circuit board. That should relieve the unnecessary strain it was placing on the tracks on the other side. I also remounted this quartz crystal. I never like the way they're often mounted standing proud of the board, and it's not unknown for them to break off if they go through uh, the journey in the post etc. It appears from the design of the circuit board as if the can of the crystal is intended to be connected to the 0 volt line but in nearly all spectrums I've seen it's either mounted standing proud or there's a piece of insulation underneath the can to prevent that connection from being made so accordingly I've put a piece of plastic underneath it so that the can is isolated and experience seems to show that that also reduces, or at least slightly reduces, the dot crawl effect. I noted that the ULA socket is installed upside down. It looks as if that was done at the factory. It doesn't matter at all, but of course, as normal, pin 1 goes to the top left up here. Finally, I have refitted the heatsink with a thin smear of thermal grease between it and the regulator.